All right, I'm just going to touch um, briefly on some stuff I've talked about before. Um, so I, I just I'm gonna just going to spend a few minutes on vaccines, um, sort of the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Um, as we all know, the vaccines have started, right? And the hope is that um, vaccination can be my, more widely available by spring of 2021. Um, it's a little bit like the Hunger Games out there trying to get a vaccine, um, but we're still in the early stages, um, both in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, um, as far as who can get vaccinated. It's mostly just um, essential workers and some of the older populations, but everything I'm reading, um, the hope is that by spring, um, it'll open up and more of us will be able to get vaccinated. So the, the biggest question we're getting, and I've talked to many, many members over the last few weeks about the employers requiring vaccines. Um, so the first thing is to remember, we're still in a very limited availability situation. So even if you are going to require vaccines, you want a long time frame on that. Um, I talked to one member, they decided to put in a mandatory vaccine uh, policy. They gave their employees two weeks to get vaccinated. No one could get an appointment within two weeks. So start with that, very limited availability. When might your folks um, have availability? Are you going to be able to help your employees um, find vaccines? Um, you know, the, the law tells us, the EEOC tells us that employers can establish legitimate health and safety requirements that are job related and consistent with business necessity. We've seen that around flu vaccines. Um, but with regard to the flu vaccine, it's really only been healthcare workers who have mandated those. And there have been big legal battles um, over the man mandating of flu vaccines. Um, generally speaking, it comes out on the side of the, of the employer, um, but there always needs to be room for reasonable accommodation um, around potential, potential disabilities or religion. And when we say religion, it doesn't have to be the organized religions that most of us think of. It has to be a sincerely held belief. So there are people out there um, who may not say this is a purely a religious belief. This is a belief that I hold that, that I've never vaccinated. I've never vaccinated any members of my family. And that is something generally speaking that we need to accept and possibly accommodate. It's an interactive process, just like anything else would be. And if you have questions around that, if you're a member, please reach out to us on the hotline, um, or if not, reach out to your employment attorney. You guys heard me talk a lot about the carrot versus stick approach. Um, and you all know I, I favor the carrot approach, right? Um, because if your employees refuse the vaccine, or if you require the vaccine, your employees refuse, what are you going to do? That's your threshold question. I just had this conversation with the member last week, and they ultimately decided to go towards voluntary instead of mandating. Because when I asked the question, what are you going to do when your employees refuse? Um, the only real answer to that is we're going to fire people. And a lot of employers are not comfortable with that. They're not comfortable with that because you're going to lose good people. Um, you're not comfortable with that because you're going to spend time, energy, and money, money finding new people. Real good example of that, there's a, a, a nursing home in Bucks County um, that was hard, hard hit back in March, April, May timeframe. They lost a lot of residents, and they said, we're going to mandate this vaccine. Um, and then when it was rolled out, only a, a little more than half of their employees agreed to get the vaccine. So they're in a fight right now. They're a unionized workforce trying to figure out what to do with that. Are they really going to fire all these people? So keep that in mind, that, that could be the result, um, and that's not necessarily a good result. Uh, potential for legal challenges, I said this before, you know, the, the, the employees who are our members, um, generally speaking, don't want to spend, again, time, energy, and money fighting this in the courts. Um, leave that, like I always say to the big boys, um, let, let the large healthcare systems, let the large corporations fight, uh, fight that fight. Um, it makes more sense for you to put your resources elsewhere. And then another interesting thing that's coming up, and I've seen this more theoretical, um, but what I've, I've been reading articles that say, if the employer mandates the vaccine and the employee has an adverse reaction to the vaccine, it could become a worker's comp event. So that might be a conversation you wanna have with your carrier before you put together any policy around vaccines, talk to your carrier, talk to your broker, see what they think. Um, what your workers' comp carrier thinks about this. So again, I'm thinking carrot approach. Education, you know, um, a lot of us, certainly me included, are so in the weeds on this COVID stuff. This is what we do. We spend time reading and getting ourselves educated and we feel like we understand this stuff pretty well. It may not be the case for the general public. It may not be the case for your employees. So educate them, especially if their primary source of information is social media, they may be getting bad information. So educate them. Cost should not be an issue. Um, talk to your insurance carrier. This should be free to all um, and make vaccine as easy as possible. I'm seeing employers um, give time off to get for the vaccination appointment, time off should you have um, 
any side effects because what we're hearing, especially with second doses, that you might have a day or two of flu-like symptoms. Um, so tell your employees, yeah, you can have that day off or you can have two days off um, after the second shot if you need it. And it's not going to count towards your PTO. That's more, makes people more likely to want to get this. Um, vaccination bonuses. I've seen everything from um, some of the, the, the retail chains like Dollar General offering a few hours of pay um, to I've seen a healthcare uh, facility offering $500. And I just heard a met from a member the other day that they were offering a $100 bonus. So um, think about all that, whether or not that makes sense. And how about other benefits for, for the vaccinated? Um, I just read an article about a large law firm. So this works with a white collar workforce, not so much with a, with a, like a manufacturing or, or healthcare setting, but this law firm is saying, everybody's home right now. You can only come back to the office if you get vaccinated. So something like that work for your workplace. But whatever you, you decide, think about a policy, okay? I, I think you should have a written policy if it's going to be mandatory or if it's going to be voluntary with encouragement. Put together your policy. What does your policy say? Um, make sure your employees, again, are informed of the policy. I'm talking to members who are doing education around this. They're doing count halls. They're talking to their employees. They're trying to understand what, what concerns their employees have um, so that they can address those. And again, you can ask employees for proof of vaccination, you, but that's the only question you can ask, basically. EEOC has said, sure, give us the proof of vaccination. But if, for example, your employee says, no, I didn't get the vaccine, don't ask the why question. And this could be something you put into your policy. Um, say, you know, we, we want proof of your vaccine, but we don't want any other healthcare information, any of your other medical information when you give us that proof, okay? So just some real quick down and dirty about vac vaccines. It's really something that, that if you haven't thought about, you really should be thinking about. And like I said, I think most folks will come out on the carrot approach, but um, something to be thinking about right now. How are we doing on questions, Kevin? I think we just had, so uh, thank you all for your responses. We have enough that we'll try to reschedule a PSO. Um, I think we'll do that first or second week in March so that if um, President Biden does come out with an executive order on OSHA, we can capture that within that course. So look for some more information on that. Uh, that is available for both member and non-members, different pricing. Um, somebody asked a question, which it's an interesting one. Can they have a policy that stops employees from eating lunch together in their vehicles on site? So I guess, you know, because of restrictions inside, some people are going outside. I would think you can do that. Yeah, I would. I, would. Um, I you know, you really property, should not be in a... Sense. You're on your property. I, if, you should not be in a vehicle with somebody who's outside your immediate household if you're unmasked. So, um, I, yeah, I would say that. But now, what's that going to mean? Your employees then take their truck and go down the street to do that? That's entirely possible. But, you know, the, the goal here at the end of the day, right, is to, to try to keep our folks safe um, because for a couple of reasons. One, because it's the right thing to do, but also because, as Aaron alluded to before, you get four or five employees sick, you're shutting down a line. You know, you can't do what you want to do. So there's a lot of good reasons to, to try to enforce these policies. Yep. I think that's it. Um, and I did see we had some comment, uh, questions asked about merit increases. Thank you all for um, uh, chiming in. We did have some issue with our survey this year uh, that the results didn't come out. So I, I appreciate members helping each other out with that information. I saw some of those chats coming in. Uh, and one one thing on that, Kevin, because I think a lot of the responses have gone to the panelists and haven't gone to the group. So, we, oh. so we've seen um, a couple of 3% and I just saw 3.5%. So somebody said no. Um, but uh, we could also put that in a poll for next week if that would be helpful. Um, and ask everybody. And the, and the three point five was somebody that did not do a, an increase the year before, so that so I, I you know I think three sounds like um, it's what we are hearing. But it, it, this is a different year, so there there is more variation. This year. Um, Absolutely. All right. So next week we'll touch on immigration and the following week on employment comps. So thank you all for joining us, and thank you, Amy and Aaron, for your great presentation today. Take care, everybody.